talk about near instant power. For today's high performance computing and AI designs, it's an absolute necessity. Yes, we all want the most powerful, most awesome AI designs, CPUs, GPUs, machine learning accelerators, memory modules, and ADAS systems. But in order for these designs to be successful, we need to supply responsive power directly to the CPU or core or memory module at logic level voltage. So how do we do that? Well, there are several ways, but some really interesting innovation is happening with transinductor voltage regulators, or TLVRs. And I think we should talk about that right now. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Maria Sacek from Vache and I explore how various inductor solutions can supply near instant power to demanding loads at low core level voltages for high power computing. We also investigate the benefits of transinductor voltage regulators and what you will need to consider when choosing the right inductor solution for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Vache. Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for joining me today. Very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about what to consider when choosing a power inductor for AI computing and high-powered processors today. But Maria, before we dig into the details, what all will we be covering? Well, to start, I will establish the scope and the specific set of applications intended for this discussion. Then we'll take a look at inductors from a material standpoint, specifically comparing performance between two common types of core materials, and that is ferrite and composite. Following that, a high-level overview of a new type of power stage topology called TLVR and seeing how that compares to traditional multiphase voltage converter topologies. And of course, we'll review the various solutions Vichet has to offer for both. And finally, wrapping up with a summary of the main points. Excellent. Okay, so what kind of applications are we talking about here? We're talking about anything that has very high power demands. So typically this will be your processors that perform very intensive computations, ranging from servers, memory modules, image processors, machine learning accelerators, and even ADOS to enable autonomous driving. We're at a point technologically where the limiting factor for AI growth is not the computing power. We have plenty of that. It's the power delivery and heat management side of it. So the challenge here is how to support the high current demand to these processors. And not only that, we need to support it nearly instantaneously and at an ever decreasing core voltage, 1.8 volts and below. So to help address this need, Miche has developed inductors with thick conductors to help minimize DCR losses, lower inductance to maximize converter slew rate and unique inductor designs optimized for whichever solution the developer is pursuing. All right, so Maria, let's talk about inductors in this space. Earlier, you mentioned ferrite and powered iron inductors. Is that correct? Yes. Part of the challenge for selecting inductors is that there are multiple core materials to choose from. And these can be broadly categorized into ferrite and powdered iron, which you will hear me refer to as composite inductors sometimes. Each core material has its own advantages, and deciding on which one to use can depend on the performance requirements as well as the constraints for the project. All inductors built with some type of magnetic core lose their inductance as the current level increases. This is known as saturation. Between powdered iron and ferrite, powdered iron has the best inductance stability, having a soft saturation curve instead of the hard drop off for ferrites, which means less tuning and more predictable ripple behavior in the converter. Similarly, thermal stability is greatest for composite inductors as well, meaning that the inductor saturation current rating at 25 degrees C will be the same as at 125 degrees C, whereas ferrites often require derating. Composites also respond better to active cooling provisions, such as heat sinks and forced air convection, 
and that is due to the lower junction decay's thermal resistance enabled by the thermal conductive molded iron body. As far as the core losses are concerned, ferrites will typically win that battle, but only to a point. The Steinmetz equation commonly used for approximating core losses shows a frequency loss component alpha and a flux density component beta. At higher ripple and higher voltage drive levels, ferrites will have a significantly lower core loss due to the lower eddy current formation. However, as the frequency increases, powdered iron performs better, as evidenced by the lower frequency coefficient. So, how does that look like in real life? Well, if you take a buck converter, fix the voltage and current conditions, but allow the switching frequency to change, you can see the crossover point where the frequency component dominates and the powdered iron inductor becomes the more efficient option. Ferrets, however, tend to have lower DCR due to the higher material permeability. And as far as EMI and electromagnetic compatibility, powdered iron is usually the better choice. The discrete air gap built into ferrites can produce up to 20 dB of magnetic field leakage that can couple to nearby components. Now, that very same gap improves the voltage rating and isolation rating compared to powdered iron. From a cost perspective, ferrites tend to be cheaper since they use simpler and older technology. However, powdered iron is superior for mechanical reliability because of the monolithic structure as opposed to the two-piece glued ferrite construction. All right, so let's talk about those transinductor voltage regulators, or TLVRs. What are the benefits and drawbacks of these regulators? TLVR is an up-and-coming architecture that has found a solid foothold in the high-power computing space, like in AI engines and servers. So this topology excels at providing thousands of watts of near-instant power to highly dynamic loads. And these regulators use coupled inductors, usually in the range of 70 nanohenries to 300 nanohenries, that function as a one-to-one -one transformer. And this is where the term transinductor comes from. TLVRs also implement an additional tuning inductor, which is used to set the slew rate. So compared to traditional voltage regulators using single coil inductors, TLVRs have higher power density. They allow for real-time current sharing and phase balancing. They have exceptional transient response, so 2,000 amps per microsecond is not unusual. And they can produce this at low output voltage and lower switching frequencies. They also enable the use of smaller output capacitors, ensure a stable output voltage with minimal voltage droop and minimal overshoots, and they can work efficiently with many phases. As far as disadvantages, while well, TLVR often require more complex control schemes, they require a separate tuning inductor and scaling may require a board spin. Since these converters are optimized for transient response, converter efficiency may be 4% lower at steady state loads. Because of the assembled ferrite construction and two coils sharing one core, this could also negatively impact reliability and increase the thermal stress on the inductor. TLVR inductors have more limited off-the-shelf options and are more costly and maybe more sensitive to EMI noise and more prone to generate it. And continuing the TLVR discussion, this is how it differs from a traditional multi-phase buck converter on a schematic level. You can see here a single coil inductor is being used in the traditional buck per phase. Now to turn it into a TLVR converter, each single coil inductor is replaced with a coupled TLVR inductor. The primary windings all function like the standard switching power inductor, but the secondary windings are where the magic happens, which I'll get into in a moment. The secondaries are all connected electrically in series and terminated with an additional tuning inductor LC. And this series chain is connected to ground on both sides. How the TLVR converter works is that a controller IC detects a change in the load and adjusts the PWM signal accordingly which is pretty standard behavior for converters everywhere. What makes the TLVR special is that the arrangement of coupled inductors and series connections enable all phases to respond quickly. When a load imbalance is detected, the secondary windings all act like voltage sources that help to induce supporting currents in the primaries. The slew rate is largely set with the tuning inductor LC. And for reference, a typical TLVR converter might be configured to step down 12 volts down to 1.8 volts, 
switching at 500 kilohertz and having 16 phases. The TLVR inductor might be 150 nanohenries and a tuning inductor somewhere around 100 nanohenries. So when it comes to transinductor voltage regulators, what kind of solutions does Vichet offer? For the TLVR phase, Vichet has predominantly ferrite offerings available with a powdered iron solution in development. Our IHTL series spans an inductance range of 70 to 220 nanohenries, offering up to 78 amps of current rating with a few models available depending on the footprint and high requirements needed. Okay, so what about traditional voltage regulators? What does Vichet offer here? For traditional voltage regulators that make use of single coil inductors, Vichet has quite a few options available, mainly in the composite construction. Our IHLL family of inductors, LL standing for long lead, has the best combination of compact size and performance up to 155 degrees C operation and going up to 85 nanohenries and 70 amps. Our IHVR product, V for Vertical, are available up to 150 nanohenries. It can support up to 112 amps. It's designed to save board space and it has the lowest DCR for a given inductance and has a patented and robust construction. Likewise, our IHSR products are also patented for their S-coil construction, but are designed to be low profile, robust, and handle high temperatures up to 155 degrees C, making them ideal for automotive applications. And finally, our IHSL inductor lineup has the design advantage of having a rectangular form factor resembling other components in the board, such as MOSFETs and capacitors, and may enable more compact PCB layout. IHSLs can achieve larger inductance for a given footprint than the other families. And this is a more detailed breakdown of our single coil inductors from the previous page. So these are powdered iron construction, so they respond quite well to active cooling measures and have excellent thermal and electrical stability. Fantastic. Well, Maria, can you recap your main points for me? Gladly. We talked about AI processors and high power computing applications, specifically regarding power inductor selection for the power stage. Vichet offers quite a few inductor solutions optimized for supplying near instant power to demanding processors. When choosing between ferrite and powdered iron inductors, sometimes that choice is made for you. Other times you may decide to go with ferrite if price, low DCR, and low rank core losses are crucial elements for the application. Otherwise, powdered iron would be an excellent choice if thermal stability, reliability, saturation, and EMC are critical. We talked about TLVR topologies and our IHTL and IHVD coupled inductor offering designed for that architecture. From a performance aspect, TLVR regulators have excellent transient response, but a more complex control scheme and a lower steady state efficiency. As far as the more traditional voltage regulators for high powered computing, Vichet has a broad offering here among the IHLL, IHVR, IHSR, and IHSL lineup of single coil inductors. These regulators have an easier control scheme, but power delivery is not as responsive. However, inductor solutions are more readily available. Excellent. Well, Maria, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure, Amelia. Thank you very much for your time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from the Shea. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from E journal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section at EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash